Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back. And in today's video, I'll be showing you 13 tips that I wish I knew sooner as a beginner After Effects editor. So without further ado, let's get into it. Tip number one, there is a much easier way to be cutting your clips, trust me. So if you were anything like me when you started out, you probably assumed that the best way to cut your clips was to drag them from your project panel and into your timeline. And then from there, you would scroll and scroll and scroll for what felt like an eternity until you found the clips that you actually wanted to use and you cut them out and then do the whole process all over again to find all of your clips. But what if I told you there is a much easier way to get this done? So instead of doing that, what you can actually do instead is you can double click your clips in the project panel and they will appear in this new small screen tab. And as you can see, there is like a mini timeline at the bottom of it that you can use to scroll through the entire video and not just the length of your composition. And don't worry, you haven't done anything to your edit. Like up the top here, you can see there's like a couple different tabs up here. And the one that is labeled is composition edit is or well, whatever you call your composition is obviously going to be your composition. And the one that I'm selected on right now is just the trailer clip that I'm using. And you can easily just switch between the two if you want to go back and forth between your edit and your clips. And then you can use these little brackets here to select a particular portion of the video like I'm showing. And then just scroll along until you have the clip that you like and then use the other bracket. And then before we actually bring it in, we're going to go down to the timeline and make sure that our timeline indicator is actually in our composition because sometimes it can like disappear and then when you import the clip it like won't be where you want it to be so just make sure it is where you want which for my case is at the start of my composition because this is where the clip is going to be imported into and then if you want to go back to your clips just simply go to the other tab at the top that should still be there and then you can just go to this button down the bottom and the one on the right will import the clip that you've selected right into your timeline like this and then all you have to do is repeat this method until you have all of your clips selected and then you can get on with your edit tip number two use the snapping tool. So the snapping tool is a really useful thing, especially if you're doing 3D, if you're making 3D shapes and all of that stuff. It can be used on 2D things as well, but for me, what I mostly find it useful for is 3D. Do be aware that some older After Effects versions don't have it, and I'm pretty sure from After Effects CS6 and later, well like and earlier, they don't have snapping. So I think from 2017, well CC 2017 upwards, which is the version that I have, you should have snapping hopefully. Um, so if you've never heard of what snapping is, it's a little tool when you've deselected everything in your composition you'll see there's this little box at the top and it'll say snapping and usually it will be unchecked and all you have to do is check the box and you will have a snapping enabled now when you go to do 3d shapes like i'm showing here when you grab a certain part of the layer you can actually connect it to other layers to easily make 3d shapes and stuff like i'm doing here like i'm making a 3d rectangle and it's super easy because i can just connect the layers together without having to remember certain values this thing is super helpful and i certainly would not want to go without it. Tip number three, how to easily distance your keyframes from one another all at once. So this is a, I don't actually know how I figured this one out, but I find this tip most helpful when I'm using presets and stuff. So I have a shake preset here and I've imported it onto this clip, but say I don't like the speed that it's going at and I want it to go faster or slower. So what you would usually do here is you drag out all the keyframes one by one, but say you really don't want to mess up the certain ratio that they are distance from each other and you just want to slow it down, but keep them relatively the same sort of distance from each other. So what you can do instead, instead of moving them one by one, is select all of the keyframes together. And then I'm using a Mac, so the key that I use is the Option slash Alt key. I'm not sure what the equivalent is for Windows, but if I find out, I'll write it somewhere on the screen. If you use Windows, just use the equivalent key for whatever the Alt and Option key is on Mac, and then hold that down whilst you have all of these keyframes selected, and then grab the one at the end and just drag it outwards, and they should all move together. And then the ratio of the distance should remain the same, but just sort of spread out or thinned in. I find this a really easy way to manipulate keyframes from shakes and other presets and it just speeds up the process really well. Tip number four, use grids. Now this is a super easy thing to do. All you have to do is go to this little selection tool down at the bottom of your small screen and then you can go to these different grid options which can be the proportional grid or the normal grid and I find these are super helpful for all sorts of things in your clip when you're like piecing together parts in your composition. You can see how well your layout is balanced and you can figure out where you want things to be exactly um, whether like the middle or you can divide your composition into quarters and thirds and so on so on. So yeah I would highly recommend using this if you haven't already. Tip number five, how to use the value graph with position keyframes. 
Now, when I started out, um, one of the first things I figured out was that when you use position, you couldn't access the value graph handles like I'm showing here. They would just appear as blocks and you couldn't touch them, you couldn't do them, and the only way you could make your graphs would be through the speed graph. But what you actually have to do is before you start making any keyframes, you go to position and you right click it and you choose separate dimensions. And this way you can control the X and Y position keyframes separately. And when you go to actually graph, your transitions you can use the value graph and the handles will be there and then you can do your graphs normally if you would use the value graph like me tip number six please 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 auto save I think that After Effects love to do is crash and you don't always know when it's gonna do this and so it's good to have auto save on as a backup plan for when you forget to manually save for an hour and then end up losing an hour's worth of progress or more if you're even more unfortunate. I wish I could say I wasn't speaking from experience but I'm sure many editors can relate. And so if you want to do this, and I really recommend that you do. Go to your After Effects preferences and choose autosave. And from there, I have mine set to autosave every three minutes, but you can make this as frequent as you want. But I recommend at least every five minutes. I know it sounds super often, but it's really nothing in comparison to how much you could lose. Like you don't realize how much you can get done in a couple minutes when you're really on a roll when you're editing. Five minutes should be enough, but I have it on three because I'm paranoid. But please, please autosave. It will save you so much frustration down the line, I promise. Tip number seven, trimming the timeline. Now let's say you have a whole timeline ready, but you only want to view a certain part of it and you're sick of waiting for After Effects to render the whole thing for you when you really just want to see this particular part of your edit. So if you want to achieve this and you don't want to see the rest of your edit for a little while, what you can actually do is you can trim your timeline to a specific portion of the edit. And you can do this by simply dragging the little blue ends of this little top bar of your timeline onto whatever certain part of the thing that you want. You can also use the keys B and N on your keyboard to trim them exactly to whatever your time indicator is. This is super helpful for just focusing on one particular part of your edit at a time and then you don't have to worry about After Effects continuing to render the rest of your edit when you don't really need it to. And you can also export your edits as well and After Effects will only render this particular selection of your timeline at a time. So if you only want to render like little bits, you can use this instead of having to render the whole entire thing when you may not necessarily need to. Tip number eight, put warps on adjustment layers. This may not be like entirely necessary for every warp that you do, but I find as a good rule of thumb, it's better to have your warps on an adjustment layer than it is to have it directly on the layers because this can cause problems down the line and sometimes After Effects will not want to render warps that are directly on your layers. Just make sure the adjustment layers, if you need to have motion tile on, you need to have motion tile on the adjustment layer with the warp sometimes. Not always, but sometimes, so just keep that in mind. But yes, warps on adjustment layers. Tip number nine, use markers with waveform. And this is something that's pretty standard to most editors, but just in case you didn't know, markers are super helpful for figuring out beats with your audio and you can drag them out from the end of your timeline just like this, just by selecting this little marker icon and dragging them out to wherever you want them in your composition. Um, and you can hold shift to snap them to wherever your time indicator is as well. And then to match them with an audio, simply go down to your audio layer and double click L on your keyboard and it should open up the waveform. And from there, you'll either have to like listen or you can see like the rises in the audio of where the beats are. And this is very clear in the audio that I've chosen because I think it's an intro, but for choruses and stuff, it's a little more muddled, but you'll learn to get an eye for it as you sort of listen and you gain experience editing and you'll learn to see where these beats are in particular with the audio and it helps if you zoom in as well. You can line up these markers with your beats and then when you scroll out later it's super easy to connect your layers and your transitions to where these beats are and then hopefully your edit will look on beat all the time. Tip number 10, how to customize your workspace. So as I'm sure you might have recognized that my After Effects might look a little bit different to yours and that is because I have customized my workspace with where the location of my panels are. And you can do this by simply selecting like the top part of your, each of the panels and you can drag them around in your workspace and you'll see these little highlighted edges of each of, of, of the other panels where you can actually like drag and drop them basically onto each other and they'll sort of mix up and layer and you can basically put them wherever you want in the workspace but obviously some of the locations are better than others and this is great for just customizing how you like to edit and if you don't like the default version of After Effects and you think you could make a better layout I'd highly recommend trying this out but yeah I really like doing this and I think maybe you might want to as well. 
Tip number 11, how to fix your workspace when you inevitably mess it up. And now the next thing, of course, that had to come after that last tip is how to fix your workspace because many a times I have been trying to customize and I have ended up clicking something weird and my workspace ends up looking like this, which is obviously not what we want. And then you sort of spend a while just trying to figure out what on earth you did wrong and then panicking because you can't figure out how to get it back together and it's just a mess. So the way you can fix this if you do end up messing up your workspace somehow, which usually I find comes about from clicking one of these top right panels up the top here and then not really realizing you've clicked it and then not really knowing how to get back. What you need to do is go to window, I think, and then down to workspace and select all panels. And as you click this, it'll just go back to whatever you had before you messed up your workspace and you'll be good to go. Tip number 13, After Effects does not actually make your clips low quality, don't worry. So I remember a big thing that happened to me when I started out editing was whenever I would import clips or PNGs and all that, they would look super pixelated on my screen and I'd always be so confused why, because I thought they were HD and they were large images, but they would always appear so pixelated and I just could not for the life of me figure out why this was happening. Um, but actually it has nothing to do with After Effects or the clips that you're using most of the time, unless you've actually chosen a low quality clip or image, then that's a low quality clip or image and I can't really do a thing about that. But what I found for me was that I had actually been selected on a super low resolution setting, um, which you can change by going down here to where it says quarter for me, but it might say something else for you. And you can choose these different options as either full, half, third or quarter or custom if you want. And if you go to full, you'll usually see that the clip that you've put into your composition will no longer be super pixelated. The reason why there are these different options is because when After Effects is rendering your edit in the preview or like main edit section in your timeline, it basically requires more work to render a full quality image than it does a quarter quality image. And so of course, if you want your edit to render faster in the timeline, I'm not talking about like the finished render that you do at the end, I'm talking about in the timeline, if you want your edit to render faster, having a lower resolution setting will likely improve that. And this is great for lower spec computers and might make like rendering an easier time on them and make it less likely for After Effects to crash and your computer to sound like it's about to explode. Changing these resolution settings will not affect the quality of your edit, don't worry, it'll just affect the quality of the resolution whilst you're editing. And you can change these whenever you want, just keep in mind that After Effects will probably have to re-render the whole thing with the new resolution. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope these tips were helpful for you. If you have any tips that you would like to share, be sure to do so in the comments below. I'd love to see them and I'm sure others will too. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.